I should reach into her basket and take out a hard hardware and start beat me. Boop, you too wicked. Boop, left her anywhere in the alone. Boop, boop. So I said, lady, lady, chill out. It's just acting. She said, no, you do it too good. You must have time for true. Your mama not shame my you. Hard door grid. Mm. All right. Speaking of that, mm -hmm. how do you handle fans getting personal? I have been in the tax office. And a young lady walk up to me and said, Mr. Martin. I say, sweetheart. I say, your wife still not give you none. <laughs> no, it's Mickey, you know. And I went, really? Oh, oh, oh okay. Another time, one figure I pick up on TV, you must make money. So she walks up to me and she says, So, Martin, beg your bills, no? So I took out the light bill, the water bill. <laughs> she wasn't amused. <laughs> I also do research that you do stand-up comedy. So what is the difference between stand-up comedy and theater? Theater, there comes times when you have to be very serious to get across the point. And you have to think in terms of the emotion and how you affect the audience. In stand-up comedy, I don't give a shit. I just say what I feel. If it hurt you, you shouldn't have sat in the front row. Your father is at the <laughs> And he says until you come out, the music can't start again. As the Jamaicans would say, flop. And foreigners would say, bomb. Have you ever been flop on comedy show before? Who? Me? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, anybody who does stand-up comedy who tells you they have never experienced that hasn't been doing stand-up comedy. You know what I'm saying? You, you say something and you're supposed to elicit a response and you hear crickets. People are sitting on the point. You have people who pay the money and come. Jamaicans are the hardest audience in the world. And you have someone who wants to sit down and say, pay me good money, you know. Make me laugh. If you know a good feel, make me laugh. And you feel your throat tight now. And you say, I'd rather face people with guns. When you have people who just look for you and just. And you have man looking at the woman and them carry and say, at this you make me pay money and carry a come to and you hope to get off of the stage as quickly as possible. The worst mistake a person doing stand-up comedy can make is to know that you have hit a rough patch and try to talk your way through it. Easiest thing to do is, well, that's my time. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gone. I did that once, and that's when I got a laugh. What has been your scariest life experience? One of the scariest moments I found out about after. Um, let's start with military. That road runs down out of Rima to the Denham Town Police Station. Patrol, and we're getting back to the Nantown police station. And they start firing at us. And people used to after that ask me, how you carry so much rounds? Because of this one experience. We're running, doing fire and cover, and fire and wood. And about 200 meters away, from the Denham Town Police Station. We run out of rounds. And we're behind various places. I was behind a light post, which was not concrete light post, it was a wooden light post. And you literally see the rounds chipping away at the light post. You know, like you see comedy and you see like comics where you see, 
like when whittled down, it felt like that. And you hear the bullet them whistling. I lost a, sh a soldier that night. And it's one of those things where when you finally make it into the Denham Police Station backyard, you check everything. You check to make certain that your underwear isn't a new shade of brown. You, you check all kind of thing. And you look up and you say, Thank you, Lord. There will be the same kind of situation where you say, Lord, you see if you get me out of this? I've done that too many times. But that night was the thing. The other one I discovered to be scary in retrospect. I went to my doctor, God rest his soul, chapter four. And he used to operate at night, testing me because I wasn't feeling that well. And last thing he said to me before I left to go home, he said, but your heart okay, man, your heart's good. So I left, went home and couldn't lie down. Couldn't find our abiding place. Something said to me, call him. So I call him and he said, come back out of abundance of caution. So I went back and he started checking me again. And when he was a bomb and put a stethoscope on my chest, he said, hold your breath. I held my breath and you felt something go boom. And say, you feel that? I say, yeah. And he starts writing and he says, find someone to carry you to KPH now. This is after midnight. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm gonna dig around for find somebody to drive me down here. So I drove myself to KPH. When I got there, hand the letter to the doctor. Little one says, sit down there and start to put the blood pressure thing on thing. And I look at me and say, you used to act on Royal Palm? And I say, yeah. He said, well, you're acting in a new movie now. I said, what do you mean? So you're acting in The Walking Dead. Because my numbers said that I shouldn't have been alive much as walking into the thing. Long story short, I discovered I had one of my arteries 95% blocked and another one 75%. They ended up putting in two stents and um, here I am. It's like a sleeve of engine in a car. I was told initially, don't get stressed and don't rev that too fast. So here I am. Um, for people who take certain things for granted, like your health, don't. I've known people younger than me who never survived that. They made them see it coming, boop, and then down. When did you go through this RD? 16th of January, 2019. Remember it like it was yesterday. Uncle Bobby? Mm -hmm. I'm happy you're still with us. I'm happy that you're happy. There's some people who are not. But let's not talk about that. Let's not. So, how do you get in bartender? Orville called me and said he wanted me to do a cameo. No, I don't know if you're familiar with the terminologies, but cameo means that you just pop in, say, hi, how are you doing? And you're gone. I did the cameo for him, and I saw this look in his eye. It's like him saying, hmm, hmm. As I said, the rest is history. I went from another one to another one to another one, and it just kept going. The guy I know, it was a man, he's a manager here, he's a fan, he's in skill. I'm going to try to call him. No, not yet. Not yet. Alright, bro. We'll check it later. No, no, man, we're cool. As, as usual, you know what I'm saying? Money, 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 money. But if anything, we try to find some time. You have the, you have the place. Like, cool. Okay, thanks. 
Alright, I'm going to call you before I come up. Alright, thank you. Love you. Thank you. Alright. No, 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 no. My J has not flagged. That is my one and only brother. No. But not judge. So, I. What's the difference between Mullins in Bartender and Madden in Royal Palm? That's the easiest way I can put it. Mullins is cerebral. He thinks out everything. Long over. He plays chess. Everybody is playing checkers. Madden is an evil son of a so and so. And he will bury you rather than try and work out anything else. Interesting. What's more interesting is that I have a little bit of both in me. What advice you would give a young actress like me? One, don't take yourself too seriously. Two, you'll get very good press and a whole heap of compliments. Don't believe them. Three, believe in yourself. There's nobody else is going to believe in you for you. Four, you're going to get very popular and very well known. But remember who you are. Because everything else you do is a part you're playing. And when you finish, you just lock off that part and leave. When I used to do Royal Palm, for instance, when I got on set, I turned on Martin. When the director said, cut, that's a wrap, I turn off, man. I've known actors, and I'll call the name, who became the person they were acting. Got to the point where they looked like they were schizophrenic. They couldn't draw a line between part they're playing and the person they really are. Thank you so much for this interview, and thank you for that advice that you just give me. You're most welcome. And I'm open to speak to anyone who wishes to hear. I don't want anybody who just pushing our button to see what them can result them can get. And if you nine times out of ten you want to find me, I'm right here. Twenty eight Camp Road, I can get your car washed. And we have drinks. One last question. Mm -hmm. You have a solid love interest with Mrs. Mullins. If you were to have another love interest, who would it be? Her. Thank you, viewers and subscribers, for watching another episode of Get to Know Autobiography Series. Coming to you from Yard Style Car Wash.